Yo, what's going on guys? Uh, it's Duran, uh, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to do the uh, Xerox uh, grainy risograph texture effect uh, that I've been getting a lot of demand for. It's cool, it's fresh, it's new, and then I, and I use it in like fucking all of my posters. So uh, yeah, but before I get into that, I wanted to mention that um, in the past month or so I've gotten quite a bit of new subscribers, and I thank you for that, I appreciate that a lot. I've also noticed <laughs> through my YouTube analytics that only 70% uh, the people that watch my videos are subscribed. I'm not trying to coerce you into subscribing or anything, but it'd be a lot cooler if you did. Uh, anyway, so if you enjoy the contents of this video, uh, be sure to hit subscribe down below, um, and I'll see you there. Yo! Alright, so we're in Photoshop now, uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to do the Xerox uh, texture grainy effect, whatever the hell. So I have two kind of base images here that I'm going to use because uh, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Uh, so I have this render that I did, uh, you know, I, it was on one of my one of my posts, one of my shirts, Jesus of Cyber Utopia, doesn't matter. What matters is the final product that you're aiming for. It's probably something like this or like this. Basically, you just want these uh, you know, grainy uh, photocopy effects on your image. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm also gonna go into a little bit of the extra. Uh, since it's relatively easy, I just might as well show you guys how to do uh, adding color and adding highlights, uh, which I like to do sometimes. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so once you have your image cut out or whatever image you're using, uh, let's say it's a render like mine, or let's say it's a stock image or PNG you took from somewhere, um, just have it ready and uh, duplicate your image uh, using Control J and go to filter, filter gallery and I already have it all set up so I'm going to delete all this but basically um, first thing you're going to want to do is go all the way down to texture and choose grain um, so what I do is use two grains uh, for the first one I use clumped grain type clumped uh, the intensity and contrast you can play with it really doesn't matter all that much uh, it really depends on your image actually uh, but yeah I, I experiment with this if I were you or you can copy my settings and see how that works uh, but this is what I'm going to use for this image um, and then after that you're going to go ahead and go down here to this new effect layer uh, and click that and it's going to duplicate your grain um, so you have two grain effects on this right now uh, but what you want is for the second grain to be enlarged. Sometimes I'll, I'll go ahead and use regular, but uh, most of the time I'm using enlarged and clumped. And for enlarged, uh, again, you can mess around with the settings. Uh, it really depends on the image. This is where I'm gonna use, um, which I find works pretty well for this image. Uh, so after you've done that, uh, go ahead to clicking this new effect layer again um, and on this top one, instead of using grain, we're gonna go to stylize, uh, I mean, sketch my bag, and stamp. Um, so you already see, we have all these gritty, nice texture, uh, noisy details in here, which is really what we're after. Um, and you can play around with these values. Uh, if you want gritty grain, I recommend keeping the smoothness pretty low, um, anywhere from two to 10. I'm gonna go with like three-ish. And then the light slash dark balance is pretty obvious. Uh, pretty much controls, you know, the brightness of your image. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. These settings I think look pretty cool. Um, and the whole idea behind this is getting the grain really embedded into the image. So you see, if I turn off these grain layers, um, the stamp filter becomes. Uh, it, it has a really it yields a really different effect um, compared to when you turn on both of these green layers. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and render this by pressing OK. And boom. There we have it, we have the Xerox greeny effect. Um, and what I like to do to add color and to add highlights is, so just to pretty much recreate this, I'm gonna go ahead and add a color uh, to the base of this. So I'm gonna double click on this layer uh, to go to the blending options and go to color overlay down here uh, and then pretty much set whatever color you want 
and put the blending mode to multiply and what that does is it makes it only affect the white values in the image uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pick just a nice blue color uh, yeah, something like this um, and I press ok and then I want to get these highlights in here um, and for that what I do is duplicate your original image so for your original image duplicate it command J uh, and bring it on top of the one we just made you can go ahead and go right back into your filter gallery and we're basically doing the same exact process except this time um, in your stamp filter turn the brightness uh, or turn it more towards the dark side so that we can kind of isolate those highlights um, maybe this about 36 that looks about right to me maybe more all right perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and press ok um, and now we've isolated these highlights and what I'm going to do is select my magic wand tool, uh, make sure the sample size is point sample, anti-alias is, I mean, I don't think it really matters for this. I usually keep it unchecked, but it, it depends on, on the graphic. Um, and make sure contiguous is not checked. Go ahead and select all the black in your image um, and delete it just so we can isolate those white values. Um, and you already see that we're getting the highlights on this image. And then if you want to add a color, it's the same exact process. Go ahead and go into the blending options and color overlay. I'm going to change this one to a nice vibrant green or whatever. Um, I think that looks nice. Nice yellow. Uh, so, yeah, that's the whole gist of the effect, really. Um, it's really simple, actually. Uh, I use it on a lot of things, and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with this. Um, and now I'm going to go over basically the same effect, but with just like a, an image. So I have this <laughs> this image of Nicolas Cage in, in the film 8mm or whatever the fuck, I don't know. I just found it on Google, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to basically go and do the same effect here. But before I do that, I'm going to add a little bit of touch up with this image so that I can get it uh, more like a photocopy. So first thing you're going to do is, again, duplicate the layer, Command J, and then this time we're going to go into Filter, Filter Gallery, and instead of choosing uh, Stamp the Grain, I'm going to go ahead and check all those, make a new effect layer, uh, make sure that's uh, shown, and instead of doing Stamp, we're going to do Photocopy. Um, so again, the, the settings depend on your image, but basically you want to bring out um, the shadows in the image uh, so uh, 20 and 19 is working well for me so we'll go ahead and use that press ok um, and it's a little bit sharp on these edges uh, and I'm going to blur that really quickly with Gaussian Blur which isn't necessary but um, I'd recommend you do it and you'll see why in a, in a few seconds uh, so I'm going to go ahead and press ok and change the blending mode of this layer to multiply which is going to only show the, the darker parts of it um, so obviously this is quite you know heavy so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the opacity down um, to around 50 something like that and after we did that we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer the original image again and bring it over the uh, new layer we just did um, and for this one, we're going to invert the image, so Command I, um, and then same exact uh, photocopy effect. So filter gallery, uh, photocopy. And what this is going to do is going to grab the opposites of the shadows now that the image is inverted. So it's going to grab the highlights, um, and they're black right now. But once we render this, we can um, get this image and then Command I again, uh, so that the, uh, the highlights are white instead of black. So uh, go ahead and turn this uh, this layer to screen, and same thing, Gaussian blur, and set the opacity down. And go ahead, use around thirty five. Right. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and group these layers. Uh, Command G. Once I have them all selected. Command J to duplicate, Command E to merge. 
Um, and once we have this layer merged, I'm going to duplicate it again just to be safe. So Command J and I'm going to filter, filter gallery, and now it's the same process um, with the stamp and grain. So I'm going to uncheck this and check the stamp and the grain. Um, for this image, it's pretty dark, so I'm going to turn the uh, light dark balance all the way low. I keep the smoothness relatively low as well. And press OK. Um, nice, so now we have this nice effect on our image. Um, uh, very nice grain in these areas, a lot of detail. And if you want to add color, it's the same process. Double click, color overlay, uh, set to multiply, and choose whatever color you want. So, yeah, that's basically it. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, I'm glad you learned something, and I hope to see it in your designs. Please tag me, I'd love to see what you make with this. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.